What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Wednesday, October 13th, 2021, and the market is closed. Now the purpose of this video is to introduce to you guys, if you have not been using any type of option spreads, I'm going to introduce two of my favorites. I think they're very beginner friendly, the debit and credit spreads. We're going to be taking a look at a bull put spread as well as a bear call spread. And I'm choosing to introduce these two to you because I have two live examples. But more importantly, a lot of you guys, if you now start trading and you have a small account and you look up these types of spreads online, you're probably intimidated by seeing the type of size that you need to trade them. But in my opinion, I think if you have a small account and you're trying to focus on consistency as well as increasing your probability, these types of spreads is actually how I think you can build up a small account. Now, when I first started trading, I did not learn to trade options this way, and I do wish I did. So I'm hoping to save you guys a lot of time and money. It's how I mostly actively trade now. And again, again, if I was introduced to this a lot sooner in my options trading career, I would have been much better off in a lot of the mistakes in which I made. Because if you ask me if you're trying to build a small account from the scratch, you're actually probably better off swing trading, but it's very difficult to swing trade options. And most people gravitate towards options when you have a small account because of the leverage. You don't need a lot of money to make a lot of outsized returns. But if you learn to actually utilize spreads, you can actually grow a small account account and not opening up yourself to much risk because the numbers and probabilities play out in your favor. So jumping right into it, what we're looking at is the SPY right here. And let's actually just dive into a smaller term time frame. So this is the five, 10 day, five minute chart. It says it right over here in the top left corner. This is the thinkorswim platform if you've never seen this before. But at this point, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you have seen some sort of trading platform like this. What I have drawn out right here is the VPOC, which is the virgin point of control. If you're unfamiliar with what this is, you can check out the link in my description down below, or I'll have it pop up somewhere in this video where I'll go over what virgin point of controls are. It just comes from the volume profile. But just take my word for it if we just jump, if you wanna see, this is our volume profiles right here. Link to this custom study is also in the description down below. But what we have right here is the virgin point of control from Thursday of last week. So I just left this drawn out. So assuming your thought process was, on Friday, which would be this day right here, you wanted to short the market because your assumption was we were going to fill the gap, which would be down here. So we jump to back to the five minute time frame. Let's actually draw out another level right here. And I believe this level is, we'll, we'll make it nice and even for uh, 35. Let's actually just increase the uh, thickness. And let's just say, this is your trade thesis. We have uh, Monday, I mean, Thursday of last week, market gaps up, it's super bullish, but then you can see the weakness right here. We crack below VWAP after we break out from this symmetrical triangle right here. And you're like, okay, cool. I think the market's going to sell off, but you want to wait the next day before you enter the trade. And you can see the weakness on Friday of last week, right? Now there's couple ways in which you can go about this. There's a few ways in which you can go about this, but we're just going to compare two different scenarios in this particular case. One of them would be the beer call spread, and the other one would be just buying a naked put, which is the way most people would go about this. Trade ideas here, you're saying, hey, I think the market's gonna go back to here. You might choose the 435 put, and you might say, I think I'm going to hold this put until the market gets down to here. However, the problem that we run into psychologically whenever you just buy an option, especially if you're swing trading, is you have to deal with theta, which would be the time decay. So the difference between here on Thursday even though you're right, as we can see, the market ultimately did end up hitting 435. There's more chances than not psychologically on Monday, as we can see the market gap down. This run up right here on Monday, when you look at your PL, will actually start showing red. Even though you are right, as we can see if we flash forward in time, more than likely, I don't know the exact number, but we'll say nine out of 10 times because we're human, we're going to stop out of this trade because psychologically this does not make sense to hold. I'm assuming we shorted it right here and this was our level, the moment it crossed over this level, and let's just say that's what you're going to use as your stop loss, you would have stopped out, but more than likely you would have stopped out around here. Now when you trade with the spread that I'm going to show you that I'm going to be showing shortly, you can come in and say like, hey, if this is my, uh, if this is the SPY's virgin point of control, it's over this level, I'm going to look to close my trade. And if you're using this up here as your stop loss, now you have a much wider stop loss and wider stop losses actually increases your probability because it means you're not going to be stopped out every time price goes against you. This actually right here ends up setting yourself up for a proper trade because if you were to open up a short position here and your stop loss was, we'll say over this level, over this point of control, and this was your reward you're talking about risking from from the time in which you would have entered the trade which would have been about 439 and a half we'll say and you're giving it about a dollar in terms of 
a dollar fifty or a dollar in terms of how much you're risking you can see right now if you, this is your profit target you're already risking you already have about a one to three risk reward this is just one case so obviously the the risk reward is not always going to be exactly the same but let's just say for educational purposes your risk reward here is a one to three in other words again this right here is what you're risking and then this right here would be your profit target you can already see that it looks pretty decent now if we jump side by side and actually look at the options on the chart let's actually pull up the uh, put right here so this would be our 435 put that we uh, just mentioned that more than likely this is how uh, most people would go about this and 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 I'm not trying to necessarily say this is a bad way of trading because I take these types of trades sometimes too it's just as a beginner sometimes I'm trying to expose to you guys that you have more tools at your disposal as opposed to just doing one thing so in this case this would be uh the friday right here and if we hover our mouse i have the crosshairs are mirrored on each side and i have it saying right here what the price would have been going for at the open we're going to assume you just hopped right into the puts as soon as the market opened if we zoom in right here we can actually see this would have been our open they're both on a five minute time frame so let's just say you hop right in you would be paying two dollars and 26 cents and in options that means it's costing you 226 dollars to actually buy this put option and if you're buying this put option you're making the assumption it's going to go down to 435 but the problem is we can see now this would be friday look what happens by monday as we can see the market did gap down but then we ended up pushing up look what happens to the cost of this put option it actually ends up dropping so assuming you bought it at 226 by the time it hits it it's low on monday which would have been right here this put is now going for a dollar 43 which would be down 36 percent so assuming you bought one of these you're already down 36 percent of your position again this sucks Let's just, tell you, let's just say you're using some sort of risk parameters where you say you stop out whenever you're down 30% on an option, or let's just say you bought this option here and you're saying you're going to stop out once you're down 50 cents. Whatever it ends up being, everybody's risk parameters are different, but you can already see that psychologically, this is the this is the problem that most options traders run into, especially when you're swing trading, because this sucks. You're looking at price. Let's actually zoom in, and I actually should have just marked this level off right here. We're saying we opened up right here. So that's the open. So price, you short here, and now the market, even though you're right, before it even gets back up to the price in which you shorted it, you're already going to be down this much. And by the time, you know, it just pokes slightly over it, you're just going to see this huge drop in the option. Even though you want to stop out over here, you can't wait for it to get up here because if price was to get up here, you're not going to be down 36%. You'll probably be down something like 50%. And that's huge. Imagine if you have five of these contracts you know or imagine if you have four of them and your position size is around a thousand dollars or something like that you're talking about being down anywhere from 360 dollars to being down 500 dollars any reasonable person myself included is going to stop out of this trade and then later in the, later in the day we can see we end up actually hitting the profit target and then it just gets frustrating because you tell yourself ah oh, i knew it i bought it here if i just held if i just held i would have made 100 percent, or i would have made 50 percent, or whatever it ends up being but yeah in actuality this is poor risk management holding through this so the better way to approach this type of situation is if we look at what's the uh 440 call so right here, the 440 call for the same expiration, October 15th, which is this Friday, we can see now, I'm actually, if we if we take a look right here, this would have been the uh, Thursday, and this would have been the Friday. So I'm hovering my mouse again, and this is where this contract opens. So assuming you shorted this contract at the open, and we'll explain how you actually go about doing this pretty soon, but assuming you short this option right here, we can already see how much premium this option has lost because the assumption in this particular case is hey the spy is not going to close over 440 again it's a bearish position bearish position or a bearish trade we're saying it's going to stay below this level we don't know how low it's going to go but this we can use as our profit target once it hits 435 that means it's filled the gap i'm going to close the trade you guys can already see look at the difference between the thought process here you're already looking at where you would probably stop out of the trade and you're using that as the call in which you're going to short or use that as your strike price for the call in which you're going to short. In this particular case, I'm using the 440 call just because it's a nice even number, but you could have shorted the 441 call also. So I'm gonna throw some levels on this chart here and we can break this down. If you're shorting this call for this level right here, that means you're collecting $3.42 as a credit. Now let's jump over to the call you're going to need to buy. 
the 441 would be the next strike up because if you just short a call naked you have unlimited risk in theory and that's very dangerous so that's why it's because that's why it's considered a spread because you're going to short the 440 call and you're going to buy the 441 call Whenever you're executing an options order and you're actually doing multiple options at the same time that connect with each other, that's considered a spread. In this particular case, this is one of the key vertical spreads. And the name of this spread, as I mentioned before, it's called a bear call spread. It's very easy to remember. It starts with what is your stance on the underlying or what is your what is the direction you're trying to trade the stock? So in this particular case, if it's the SPY, which is an ETF, you're bearish on it. So that's the name. That's the first name, bear. Bear, and what are you doing? What type of options are you trading? You're trading the calls. So it's a bear call spread. It means if you told this to another trader, inherently they're going to know it means you are shorting a call option. But they also know that you're buying another call option as protection. Now, because I don't want to make this video too long, just understand that that's the way it works. I'll make other videos in the future. Expect to see a lot more spread based videos on this channel because I'm trying to introduce a lot more of this, even for day trading as well as swing trading, as I'm trying to really help you guys build out smaller accounts. And even if you have a large account, this is a great way to take safer trades. Well, safe can be debatable, I guess you can say, but this is a lot way to increase your probability and actually stay in trades longer. Because if you're anything like me and you look back at a lot of the trades in which you might have taken a loss on or stopped out on in the past especially as options trades you'll see that you were more than likely right in the in the direction but you were just wrong in how you structured the trade because you probably just bought a call or you bought a put and then it sucked because time decay was eating away at your option and you had to take a loss even if you were right on the uh, di direction so what ended up happening if we go back to the put again the reason this put lost so much value is because not only is the direction wrong in which way the spy is heading it's also because so much time had passed by from the time you open the uh, put to the time to the present day and that's what's hurting this but in this case if we look at the call again by the time we can see right here if this is the call and this is where we shorted it look at the next day right here here goes the monday after the weekend this call is down but guess what even as the spy is rallying the call is also gaining in value, which is bad for you because you did short it. So you don't want this call to increase in value. You actually want it to drop. But in this particular case, it's increasing in value. But guess what? It doesn't come back up to the strike to, to the price in which you sold it for. So if it, think about this, guys, if you're selling something, if you don't understand necessarily the concept of shorting or shorting options, if you're shorting something, it means you're selling it with the intention of buying it back cheaper later. That's what's creating what's called this credit here because I shorted this or I sold this to someone I'm collecting they're paying me three dollars and forty two cents to actually buy this option from me my plan is to buy this back once it's cheaper later and what do we know about options is that no matter what happens theta is always burning away at an option which means it's always losing value so even if the spy was not to sell off to our price target as long as the spy stays below 440 we're going to be profitable you guys can already see how this is already opening up your chances of profitability or probability of being profitable because now you don't need one scenario to happen if you just buy the put the only way you make money is if the spy actually dropped and it would need to drop quickly because it needs to outpace the theta or the time decay but in this particular case, the SPY can take its time. It could have hovered around here for a few days, for a few days. And even if the SPY just hovered around here, guess what? The 440 call would have be down, would still be down even though the SPY did not drop yet. And even if the SPY did go higher, as we can see, if it takes too long to go higher, you're still going to be profitable. Because even if you bought this call back here, if you shorted it at 340 and it's now going for, we'll say, 320, I'll round it up, you're, you're still making 20 cents on this option, which means it would have still been a green trade even though now you shorted the spy here and now the spy is higher than where you shorted it you can make this decision and you won't be emotional about it because you're not looking at your p l and reading how much you're down on the trade you're actually looking at your p l and you're saying oh wow i'm still green on the trade even though the spy is rallying so assuming you decide to close at least you can close the trade for a break even in a clearer mind state but now if we take a look at the 441 call, this would be the call we would have to buy because again, you can't just short an option naked unless you own 100 shares, which would be a covered call, but that's for another video. 
I'm going to throw the levels on this chart also. And this is, uh, let's just zoom out right here. So in this particular case, if you guys want to see, I have the arrow drawn out exactly. This is what the price was going for directly at the open right here. So at this case, we have to buy this option. If we're buying this option, it's going to cost us $2.89, which is 289 bucks. But remember, we sold the 440 call for three dollars and 41 cents if i jump back to it just to double check three dollars oh it's actually three dollars and 42 but let's just say three dollars and 41 it's just a penny difference right here we jump back to it so by selling that that's how much money we actually collected and then we have to buy this option so this is how much it's costing us so in total we end up with a credit of 52 cents which means 52 dollars now, as we fast forward in time, we can actually see by the time the uh, SPY actually hit our targets, assuming it's anywhere around here. So I marked out a, a good rule of thumb is 50% of the uh, options. So if we go back to the call that we sold, if we sold this for 342, this call would be down 50% of its value right about here. So this could have been one place in which you would have closed the position. So I'm going to use this for now. Most people use 50% of the credit received, which is a good way to go about it. So in other words, if we jump back to this, if this is your uh, credit received, a good place to close this trade is once the position has lost half of the credit, so you'll buy it back for cheaper. So in other words, I sold this spread to someone, collected $52 in credit, and then I'm going to buy it back when it's at $26. And then I would be profiting the difference, would be, which would be 26 bucks in this case. But for purposes of this video, I'm just going to say, I assume you ended up buying it back right here just because you got a little bit nervous. You got made the profit so fast after holding through all this and you decide to close here. But in actuality, we can see the profit was ultimately hit or the target was ultimately hit. So using this as an example, we would have to... Uh, because we bought this for this price and then we have to buy it back cheaper, that means we would have suffered a $1.53 loss. But if we jump back to the 440 call... We shorted this for $3.42, but we're buying this one back for $1.70, which means we actually made a buck 72 or $172. So we made $172 on this contract, but we actually lost $172 on this contract. The difference ends up being 36 cents. So that would be our net profit. So here was how much money we ended up winning. And this is how much money we ended up losing. But overall, we ended up with this as a profit. You guys understand how this works. And this is this is, in a sense, how these types of credit spreads work. Whenever you sell a spread, and it is a spread because why? We sold the 440 call, and we're buying a 441 call, and we're doing it as one order. And that's why it's making it a spread. And then we're buying it back when it's cheaper. Do you guys how, do you guys understand now why psychologically this is a much better situation to be in or it feels a lot more comfortable? Now, if you want to know what is the risk whenever you're doing these types of trades, it's actually the distance between your strike prices. So if the distance between the strike prices here, 441 and 440, that's that's one point and one point means a hundred dollars. So it's a hundred dollars minus the credit received and the credit received is 52 bucks. So we're actually so our max loss in this case, I'm going to average it out to just say it's only going to be $50. So we're risking $50 to make at most $52, but we're going to close it at half of that. So the risk reward might seem weird when you first start using these types of spreads, but understand your room for profitability, your, your probability of success is much higher. Jumping back to the 441 call for a second, if we take a look at its value right now, you guys can see how this thing is actually crushed. It's down almost, it's down over 90% right now from the open, assuming we had entered the trade here and you're still holding. But you never want to hold these types of spreads all the way until the end. They still have two more days till expiration. And the worst thing that would happen for you is if the market just decided to rally for the past for the, for the next couple days. Again, today's Wednesday and the market is closed, but there's still a Thursday and Friday. Anything can happen. And if you would have held this from all the way here to here, there's no reason to hold this trade to just make an extra 10 cents of profit. You might as well close the trade. So my rule of thumb, I close the trade whenever I'm up either 50% or 61%. Those are my usual profit targets whenever I'm running these types of spreads. Now I want to jump over to uh, OptionStrat, which is one of my favorite uh, websites to use whenever I'm analyzing my types of spreads. And as we can see right here, this is a good breakdown. This is how much margin the spread would have taken to actually run 100 bucks. And why? Because it's the distance between the two strike prices. And then the max loss is whatever is the distance minus the credit received. This is present day. So this is if you were to run this spread right now. And as we can see, this is pointless to run this because it's 
because you're not going to receive much credit but if we jump back in time we can actually see we would have been opening this trade it was right here and this was friday which was october 8th so if we look at october 8th which would have been right here at the open as we said the spread was going for about 50 it says right here uh 55 cents between 55 cents and 51 cents 52 we were using 52 as an example so let's just say 55 52 this is pretty much where you would have gotten filled and you can see the spread is now going from here to here it's only going for 12 cents so you'd be up about 40 cents which would be 40 dollars in this particular case and again your max profit would have been 52 dollars <laughs> so so it wouldn't make much sense to be in this trade to make this extra 12 cents you can close this right now and enter in some sort of other spread now the thing that's good about when you run these types of spreads is theta is on your side right here and theta is positive as opposed to being in a trade where your theta is negative and that's what i like i like to open up as many spreads as possible that have positive theta so the credit spreads are usually trades that have positive theta as well as certain uh, calendar spreads iron condors diagonals those types of spreads have positive theta and you can start looking into some of those and again i think they're great ways to build small accounts especially if you know what you're doing and essentially all you need the spy to do is stay below the strike price you shorted anything below here means you're making money and that's why the chance for profit is usually so high now, now, now I want to point something out also on the options chain because if you follow me on Instagram then you know I like to post certain things about the options chain just calling out certain things I see in the open interest if we take a look at the uh, 440 call this would have been the one that we would have shorted do you guys see the open interest is pretty decent right here it's actually one of the highest open interests the next one is all the way down here which would be the 450 strike the 450 strike has had highest open interest for the longest time for the past like few weeks if I remember correctly and that's just because everyone's been thinking the market's going to bounce back up to 450 market makers know this so they're telling selling a bunch of 450 calls that keep expiring worthless but now the interesting thing i want to point out is on the put side do you guys see 435 look at the open interest right here and the volume on the 435 uh, put as well as the open interest and volume on the 433 put this is a good vertical spread that's probably happening right now a lot of people probably sold the 435 put because by the time the market got down to 435 people know that they people people traders will already know we filled the gap and this is like the 50 percent retracement from last week's low if i remember correctly from here to here it's about a 51 about a 50 to 61 percent retracement so in this area is essentially a good place to be getting long if you are bullish assuming that we're going to bounce back up to this vpoc and using any of these levels as some sort of a stop loss if you see my video my la my most recent video i talked about this area over the weekend before uh before this types of price action i already gave you guys the heads up that in this area i was going to be looking to build some sort of long position i was targeting uh 432 as well as um 440 431 or 430 i don't remember exactly the levels but i did mention 432 as a good level to go long because the risk is much lower down here and if we jump to the options chain again these puts are not very likely to expire in the money by friday and that's the way i like to look at the options chain so if i was to open up some sort of spread i will open up the opposite to the spread in which we have running right now but this video isn't necessarily about that i want to jump into an example of of one more ticker for you guys that I actually opened up today if you notice I posted this on uh, um, on Instagram as well as my uh, Twitter I'm gonna try to be a little bit more active on my Twitter but here we have uh, the uh, four here we have another VPOC on Apple we'll just say this is 440 and if we jump over to my discord we'll see here this is at a uh, 1010 I just mentioned, I said, I'm going to swing a few of these. The trade idea is Apple closes above the weekly buy zone on Friday. The weekly buy zone is pretty much, we'll just say 440 by Friday. Again, this is from the Quant Trading App uh, levels. And the link to description is, to Quant Trading App is in the description down below, as well as the link to my dis Discord. This is the uh, premium section for gold members in the Discord. But there is a free section that's the public section. If you're just interested to join the Discord, link is in the description down below. And also, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, share the video, like the video if you're learning anything here, and leave any comments and if you have any questions. But I said that this is a nice beginner-friendly spread as it's Apple and the risk is small. What did I mean by that is if we see right here, the margin required is only 100 bucks because, again, the distance between the two strikes is only one point, so 100 bucks. The credit received is 39 bucks, and the uh, max loss is only $61. $61. Again, you just do the difference between the two and this is straight from option strat right here all we need apple to do is essentially stay above this price today tomorrow friday it doesn't really matter this spread already is up pretty nice it's up to like 40 something percent right now today but i pointed this out here and then uh in the public chat i believe i came in and i was uh talking about how you can approach this and why i suggest you know trading this type of way if you're looking to start building out a new if you're looking to build a, a small account 
Now, if we jump back to the chart and we're seeing this, you can see, so I have technical reasons for why I think Apple is going to stay above uh, 140. But next, let's take a look at the options chart. Here's our 440 put and check out that open interest as well as that volume. It's pretty high relative to all of the other strike prices, right? It has the highest open interest right here. On top of that, look at the open interest on the call side. It's pretty aggressive on this side right here. So I'm no way, you know, Apple's going to be closing over 150 this week unless there's some insane catalyst or something like that. But the chances of that happening are very low. And how do we know? Look at the delta of this. It's a 0.01, which means this has a 99% chance of pretty much expiring out the money. Also a good strike to sell, but you know, this is pointless. You're only going to collect a dollar in credit, which is ridiculous, which means you're going to make $1. You'd have to sell so many of these that your commission would actually mean you'd lose money on the trade. But in this case right here, at the time when I sold this call, so, so at the time I sold this put earlier today, collected enough credit to make it worth it, and as I mentioned, if we jump to uh, the option strat and we look at it on the chain, we can see how is this doing right now. So I shorted this earlier today for around here and you can see it's already going for tw 23 bucks. So we'll probably be hitting the profit target tomorrow. And again, even if Apple decides to, even if Apple decides not to gap up or if it just opens flat or even if it comes back down to about here tomorrow, the position will still be green. All it has to do is just hover around here. And even if it came down to here, it will still be green or at least I'll, my PNL will still be green and then if it stayed all day at that level i'll still end up being up almost about the same percent that as i am now and then if all apple had to do is just bounce slightly early on friday morning in which i'll definitely be closing the trade but i'm more than likely going to close the trade tomorrow because again it's hitting about the 50 percent profit target or i'm going to try and hold out to see if i can get 68 percent out of the trade but either way great way to build a small account because if you take because if you take a lot of trades like this and they have about depending on when you learn how to read the Greek. So if you know where to open these trades or when to open these trades or how to read the options chain prop properly, you can end up having a win rate of close to about 65 to 75% running these types of credit spreads. So it means if you take four trades like this and you lose on one and you lose on half of your credit, or even if you risk the full credit, you can still end up being profitable over the long term if you take a lot of trades versus every time you try to buy a call because if Apple came down to 440 today and I bought a call I probably would have stopped out guess what right here right doesn't this make sense because look at this price action assuming I bought the call here my stop loss might have been the lower day we're already we're already pretty far below the VPOC I was actually surprised that we even went this far below the VPOC but assuming I bought here if I bought the if I bought a call let's just say I bought the 142 call the 142 uh, strike price and Apple did this, my PL would have looked a little green and then this would have happened. It would have looked very red because these are weekly options. So between here to here, not only did Almost, not only did an hour or two hours, uh, however much time passed by, but then price has also gone against me, I would have taken this as a stop loss. And then later in the day, Apple would have done this. And then I would have just been sitting here pretty upset, pretty frustrated. You know, the, the psychological battles as it is, is being a trader versus being able to mix up your trading style. And I'm not necessarily saying you only need to do spreads or credit spreads or debit spreads. We only talked about credit spreads in today's video, by the way, but I'm not saying you only need to do this. I'm just saying understand that there are other ways to trade the same trade idea and there's different ways to execute it especially if you're an options trader and you can also be a lot more calm running these types of trades because so if we jump back to the discord we can actually see i ended up saying right here got filled at a dollar 39 and it's a set it and forget it type of trade for me either apples above 140 or not we'll check back in on friday i made my size something i don't really care if i even if i take the 100 percent max loss on now i'm not intending to take the 100 percent max loss but i'm just making a point that even if i did take the 100 percent max loss my position size is fine and for you if you took this trade and you only took one and your max Max loss is 60 bucks you're okay let's just say you have a two thousand dollar account a sixty dollar loss when you're an options trader is not going to really damage you psychologically especially when you have the potential to make upwards of like 30 bucks we'll say on this and you take this and you have seven out of ten times you're going to be right on this the numbers end up working out is all i'm trying to say here so so to avoid myself from rambling too much i told myself this was going to be a short video i have no idea how long it's been already since i've been recording so i'm going to cut it right here and i'll catch you guys in the next one thanks for watching later